for another week and another episode of, well, The Bad Batch has just dropped. And this one has got to be one of the most unusual, I think. It's been a bit odd. We've had a major heist gone bad. We've had Crosshair dealing with the events of everything and quite possibly his overall feelings of the Empire. And now we're dealing with Ardley Sid. Sid is a character we've always known, but we've never really known her much about. We know the fact she's involved with the underworld, is that's how the bad guys get their jobs. We've known that she's dealt with contacts and she's basically been their middleman and their broker, getting them jobs, and also giving them a roof over their head, or also giving them a share of what they need. But this is the first time I think she's ever done them a mission where I think they've actually done something for her properly. Most of the time it's just they've done the job that she's told them to do. Basically, she's just been the broker, they've been the muscle. But now she's decided to bring tech, echo, and Tech, Rekka, and Omega on a mission with her. And that mission, well, or job, turns out to a fact it was another form of racing other than pod racing, which is nice to see, the fact that there's actually more than one form of racing in the Star Wars universe, not just pod racing. I think, basically, it's sort of a, it's a cross between normal racing and, I think, some form of banger racing type event, because it seems very, very rustic in terms of its appearance. And all the ships seem to be derived from the same thing, as pod races could wah very wildly, based on anything from engine style to cockpit layout. But this was a bit more, I think, like a circuit race and far shorter. Less about speed and more about skill. And also what I mean by the fact is a bit like banger racing. Basically, one of the ways to knock your opponents out, out the race is to basically just to shoot them down and use tricks to Basically, outmaneuver them. It kind of reminds me a bit of I don't know, the Speed Racer franchise in how in Speed Racer, where basically the cars had gadgets that they would use against the opponents. It's pretty much the same thing. Most of the time, they use blasters set to low power. Well, not well, powerful enough to kill. But they also use other tools as well, as one of them do cheat, and there's a fair bit of cheating, and there's probably some fair bit of flying. And the episode was quite good in the fact we actually see what goes on. Basically, this is one of Sid's many hustles, and basically she's bought herself a racer and a pilot droid who can fly it, while at the same time, things go a bit badly. For example, she runs into an old contact, as she's been in the underworld for some time, who wants her to pay back her debt. And it's quite interesting to say the least of what happens. For example, and then the fact her racer gets smashed. So, of course, she, she can't pay him back. I don't think he didn't want her to pay her back anyway. And then, possibly the fact that Sid's done him wrong before. And also the fact they try and rebuild the ship. And the pilot droid. And the best thing about the pilot droid is, oh yes, I can get this job done right. And he put me back together correctly. He's just pretty much so arrogant. And then he gets smashed to pieces again. And then he says, I regret nothing before going offline. And they can't get him back together again. They fix the razor, but they can't put him back together. And time to race. So Tech takes to the track in the ship. And he uses, basically, strategy. He basically, like, tries to map out the course and everything to help. But then tries mapping it out. And Tech, using his brain, does a few things I would never even imagine. For example, spoiler alert, he jettisons his nose cone, which contains his weapons, for to save, basically to save weight so he can get more speed. As Barry, one of the ships, pretty much been crashed to pieces, and he just put it back together again. And then he uses some other tricks, like they try and pull the same stunt they did before on him, but this time he manoeuvres around it. And also, a few other races also crash. And at the end of it, it's brilliantly done. I think in general it's also nice to see the fact that, that there are events taking place in Star Wars that are just other things, such as pod racing was nice to see because it was something unique to Star Wars, but also the fact there's other forms of racing as well going on in Star Wars. And like stuff like pod racing is a professional sport with rules amongst everything else, but of course it, stuff going on behind the scenes. Whereas this is more amateurish and more rustic, with the craft pretty much being basically built out of scrap. Although it does seem to be a fair few rules, such as for example all the cockpit modules seem to be the same ship. And the fact the blasters won't destroy the vessel, but take it out of action. But it does seem the fact there are what rules there are, are open to interpretation. And of course, there's a got everything of that you'd expect from like an amateur racing series, such as spectacular crashes and a, fair few, and a couple of pile-ups. 
and along with a whole host of action, while also with obstacle also the race being somewhat a bit of an obstacle course, in which skill is much as important as tactics. And anyway, the fact that Tech wins the race, but at the same time, the person she owes the debt to gives the Bad Batch advice, saying the fact that watch your backs with Sid, as if the fact that Sid would ever do anything against them. And I think the other thing is also the fact that it seems like the fact that they they do various different jobs, including one of the best bits I think at the start of the episode is the fact that Tech complained to Sid about one of the jobs they did, which was basically a Paulage job. You know, these guys are spec ops. They're soldiers. They use military tactics. You know, so you know the fact they they're very good at what they they're very good at the jobs they do, which are basically military. So why would they need to do things such as hauling stuff about, although quite possibly with Wrecker, who can lift a lat gunship, or can flip a lat gunship over and think how big that is. So yeah, so odds on I think are possible. If I was Sid, I would make use of everything as well. I mean, Omega's a barmaid. You've got Hunter on the bar. You've got Tech and Echo to cook the books. And Echo to not only help her cook the books, but also figure out the best place to actually hide her money should the Imperials come looking. And we've got Wrecker as a general, and we've got Wrecker who serves as a bouncer. <laughs> yeah, I think I possibly she uses Wrecker as a bouncer just because of how big he is. But I think that was that the interesting thing, the fact of Sid's criminal past. And the fact we know for a fact she's been in a criminal for a long time. And the fact she's had dealings with other people, as most people would. And the fact that, I think it was just the thing how fair it was, you know. They won the race fair and square and he didn't double deal it. But the fact he actually gave him a piece of advice, you know. Watch your backs with Sid. I think basically what he's telling him is the fact that Sid might sell them out to the Empire if it proves more profitable for her in the long run. But as we know, the Empire is as corrupt as the corrupt can be. And we've already seen them do whatever it takes to get the job done and to cover their tracks. And that's possibly what goes on elsewhere. At least during the early days. I'm not sure if it's that's the same idea of going forward into later shows like Rebels and or and so on and so forth. Because by this point, there's Imperial Security... Bureau is gradually ramping up its operations, and it does have a very skilled team of analysts who are very good at analysing patterns, and that's what they probably were specifically trained for. But outside of that, I think it's just nice, I think, to get another aspect of the life in the Star Wars galaxy. That is always something I really like about it. It's when we get something that's a little bit of lore about the universe. You know, how they live, what the customs are like, what do they do for leisure. What food is like? How does the money system work? It's nice to see all of that. And at the same time, it was... I think now I see the fact of how diverse the Star Wars universe is. And the fact there are different layers and different forms of entertainment from high opera to a good old smash and grab banger race. And I have seen banger racing twice and I think it's quite a hell of a good fun. Especially with it's just because when it comes to the grand finale. They should really... Star Wars, uh, Dave Filoni, Kathleen Kennedy, Jennifer Corbett and whoever's watching... Please give us a speed of banger race or a speed of demolition derby, please, in another show. I would very much love that. Just because it would be absolutely an absolute hoot. And could possibly could absolutely be an absolute laugh. And could be very funny. <laughs> because we need more of the endings of the idiotic pit droids. Because you've given us plenty of gaffes with the B1s. Now please give us some pit droid gags. <laughs> like the total of one of them got sucked through a jet engine or a pod racer. <laughs> I said, I live! <laughs> More of that, please! Because those pit droids, it is absolutely hilarious. And I mean, they are. They are. The time when we first introduced them, they were actually surprisingly funny. That was comedy gold. The fact he got sucked into an engine. <laughs> a great donkey jet. Spewed out the back of the engine blue when he was like, Woohoo! Again! <laughs> As well the fact he was half mangled. Oh uh, boy, we need more bit droids, I think. More bit droids, please. Well, I've been the Unit for the Challenger, asking you please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheerio!